Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale and welcome to episode 12. This episode we're going to be putting together our ATX power supply so we can power up our tortoise switch machines and all our control panels. So let's get started. Okay everyone, so uh, before we get started, let's let's go over uh, this ATX power supply and tell you a little bit about it. <clears throat> so this power supply that I bought, I bought it off of uh, Gemco when I was ordering some wire and it was 18 bucks. Um, it's a 350 watt power supply and if you look at your side label plates, uh, it'll break down the different voltages and what the amperages are per, per uh, voltage. Now if you look here, this has uh, two 12 volt rails inside, it has a 12 volt one and a 12 volt two, and that gives you 17 amps or 16 amps. Then you also have your five volt rail, which gives you 15 amps, a three volt rail at 21 amps, and then you got the negative 12 and the, uh, the other five volt. So as you can see, it adds up pretty quickly to you know 350 watts. Now, what you have to be aware of before you start taking these apart is that they do have large capacitors. They, they store a lot of power. Now, I've read some reports that, that the capacitors could have uh, very high voltages, up to two, uh, 200 volts. So be cautious before you open this to make sure you discharge it. And I'll show you how to do that because if you don't, you can get a significant shock. Okay, so let's go over the connector here. All the ATX power supplies have a standard uh, pin configuration. Um, and what that means is that it's an industry standard that tells you um, which voltage is for what color. Um, and there's also a 24 pin or a 22 pin. Um, I'm sorry, 24 pin or a 20 pin. And just by removing that, this is now a 20 pin, but then by adding this, it becomes a 24 pin. Now, I'm not too computer savvy, but I believe some of the newer computers are using the 24 pin where the older styles use the 20 pin. Now, what the colors that you need to know about is that the, um, the orange wires here are your 3.3 volt lines, your red wires are your 5 volt lines, and then your yellow line, wires are your 12 volt lines. Then there's also some other colors in here. Uh, this gray wire here, this is going to be your check voltage. And what that means is the power supply, when it's up to voltage, will send a signal to the motherboard telling that the voltages are set. Um, the second wire you need to know about is your purple wire. Um, I don't know what this is exactly called, but what this will do is this will tell you that um, there's power available to the power supply, meaning that once you plug this thing in, the power, the power supply gets, uh, gets power and this will send a message. So this is good if you want to tie an LED to it, which we'll be doing, to tell you that, uh, hey, the power is in there and the capacitors are going to be live. So this way, it warns you not to work on any electrical circuits because everything could be charged. The other significant wire, this is very important that you need to know, is this green wire, and this is your startup wire. Now, the way you start these things is you have to take the green and run it to ground, and your, of course your ground is all these blacks. Now, with this power supply in particular, um, I've discovered by uh, opening it up, there is a yellow and black wire, and this, I believe, is a connection for a, um, a either a DVD or a um, DVD-ROM and this is a separate this is the 12 volt number two line so this 12 volt here comes off of the, the number one bus and then this 12 volt comes off of the number two bus so the only way I could determine that was by opening the case up so what you have to be wary of is that um, these things I cannot find any kind of wiring schematics for these so pretty much just uh, trial and error and looking at the board the way it was set up inside the ATX power supply. Okay, so now what I've done for testing purposes is I took some nails and I shoved them into this, uh, this connector. And um, now be, be aware, it, it does spread the pins out in the connector, so it pretty much makes the, uh, the plastic connector useless for uh, its intended purpose. But it doesn't matter because we're going to be uh, cutting this whole thing off. So uh, let me get my setup and I'll show you how to power it up test it and I'll also show you some of my, my theory um, with the, the LEDs and how they, they set up and how they work. Okay, so what I've done is I've set up some, uh, some stuff here to show you the theory, okay? Um, this, little LED, this little green LED, it's a 5 volt LED, that's tied into the, uh, the purple wire which will tell you when the, uh, the power is on standby. And then this is the red LEDs tied into the gray wire which is the check voltage wire. So when this one illuminates, that tells you that the, the power supply has uh, balanced out all the voltages. Then this little ground, this is just an on-off uh, single pole, single throw switch 
and that's tied to the green wire to throw it to ground. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm powered off. I'm gonna go ahead and power, uh, plug in the unit. Okay, and if you notice first off, first thing is I have a green LED and that's showing me that there's power and this thing's ready to go. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna flip our switch and it's gonna take the green wire and put it to ground. And you notice that our fan is uh, operating and our red, our red check voltage LED has come on. That means that the voltages are all set to go. So now I've tested some theory and we've also, I've also shown you how to che check the power supply and make sure it operates properly. So before you start ripping into this thing, check to, check to make sure it works properly because once you open the case, you're gonna void the warranty. So if you power it up, you attempt to power it up and it doesn't work, you can at least send it back and get your money back. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to power down the unit. You can see that the check voltage goes out and but my green LED is still on and that means that there's still power in the capacitors. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna unplug the unit. The unit is still unplugged. I still have a green LED. That means that this unit is still live. So the way we do that is we turn, our, we turn it back on. The fan spins momentarily. The green LED goes out and the fan stops spinning. Now you've totally discharged the unit. There's nothing in the capacitors. I'm still on. The fan's not rotating. So at this point now, you should be good to go to, to start working. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and uh, we've checked our, our unit. And now we're going to prep it uh, so that we're ready for uh, installation uh, in the drawer. So the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and carefully cut off all these wire ties. Make sure you dig into this wiring harness and look because they hide a lot of zip ties in there. Um, I've already prepped one and uh, as I was pulling the wires apart, I'd find more inside. Okay, so once we've done that, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and cut off all these connectors, throw them aside. We're not gonna need them. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to cut as close as I can to the, uh, to the plastic connector. It's just so I can get the max amount of wiring I, 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 I can, so I'll have plenty of wire. So now what you're gonna have is a big, big spaghetti bowl of spaghetti of wire. So what I then do now is we separate them into colors. Now be a little be a little gentle with this because they are just soldered to the board so you don't want to go yanking these wires because you might disconnect them from the board and then it's just going to make more work. So get my grounds, more grounds. These are my all my important uh, wires that I'm going to need. I'll put them aside over there. Here's my orange and red. Orange is my 3.3 volt. Red is my 5 volt. And there. So now I got them all divided. So now, well, we're, we're not. I'm not going to be using 3.3 volt because um, I don't. I'm just going to put it aside. Maybe in the future I might find a use for it, but I don't think there's a use. 5 volts. Uh, we're going to be using for any kind of like house kind of stuff. Uh, running. Uh, when any kind of boards uh, for the layout, any kind of um, PC boards or any kind of devices that need five volt. Also, uh, the one power supply is gonna be running a, f uh, a couple fans for the uh, electrical cabinet um, and also the meters. So some of my amp meters uh, need five volts to uh, power up. So that's what the five volt I'm gonna use for. Um, all my grounds. Now, just to be aware, um, the these chassis are grounded uh, there it's a common ground so it's kind of almost like working on a car so if you've installed any kind of fog lights on your car and you know you have the one common ground you can always you know ground it to the chassis of the car well, it's the same principle so it doesn't matter which ground you use so I'm just gonna put these aside and use them later <clears throat> here's all my my 12 volts and here is that that yellow and black stripe wire that I told you about in this this unit now I don't know if all the units have it but this unit does and this is going to be the 12 volt number two which I believe was 17 amps and this is my 12 volt number one which was 16 amps. all right so now I'm going to now that I've sorted out all my wires I'm going to go ahead and open up the case because we have to do something inside we have to Im install a what's called a sandbar resistor and this is a uh, 10 watt one um, 10 watt resistor and I'm going to put that in line with a five uh, five volt line and the ground and what that's going to do is it's going to these in order 
the research that I've done says that in order for these to function properly, they have to have a load. So if you're not going to have anything powered up and they're going to be sitting there and you want them the voltages to be proper, you have to have a load on at all times. So um, we're going to install one of these and I'll show you where I do that. Okay, so now with this unit, just be I have to be cautious with this unit because I have a top mount fan. So if you look, the fan is actually attached to the chassis and there's a wire, so I don't want to yank it out. There is a plastic connector to the motherboard that I could pull it out and, and get it out of the way, but I don't really need to. So the first thing what you want to do is once you're inside the chassis is you cut this zip tie. Because what the what I'm gonna do with this here, pull the zip tie out. Now I'm going to take a black wire and a red wire and then what I'll do is I will solder my resistor in line and then I'll fasten it to the back of the chassis when you put these in they can create a considerable amount of heat so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in here where the airflow blows across it so this way that it keeps it cool um, when you attach this in here also be aware because it does get warm, don't use any kind of wire with insulation because you may melt, it may melt and start a fire. So you're going to use some bare wire and what I'm, uh, I just have some small uh, 16 gauge uh, bare wire that I'm just going to tie it to the back. So, okay. Okay, so now that we've gone over the ATX power supply, let's get to work uh, setting it up in the drawer and get everything run. So uh, why don't you sit back and watch how we did that. Okay, so the first step in the process is we're going to go ahead and solder our uh, sandbar resistor in line with a 5 volt and ground. Make sure you use heat shrink on all your solder connections so this way you don't create a short inside the chassis. After soldering the connections, I slide the heat shrink over the uh, solder and then I use my heat gun to uh, shrink it. Don't overdo it with the heat gun because you don't want to melt any of the wires or any of the components around it. Now I route the wires to the back of the chassis and I fix the resistor to the back of the grate with the wires. When routing the uh, wires to the chassis, make sure that it doesn't come into contact with any of the other components inside. Once that's complete, I just put the cover back on and we're ready to go to the next step. Now I pull the drawer out of the cabinet and I bring it over to my workbench and set up my workspace. I first lay out all the components in the positions in which I want them in the drawer. Next I start securing the power supplies down with Velcro. To ensure that everything doesn't get too confusing, I'm only working one side at a time. This fuse box assembly I got off of DigiKey. I'm only going to route the 12 volt power supplies through the fuse box. I thought that a fuse box would be a good idea just to prevent overloading circuits. Now I'm separating out the purple, gray, and green wire and grounds that I'll need for all the switches.
Here we're soldering the wires to the on off switch. Make sure you put the heat shrink on the wire before you start soldering. Here I'm connecting the gray check voltage wire to the red LED. Now I'm connecting the purple standby wire to the green LED. As I'm connecting these wires, I'm just pulling the black ground wires out of that big bunch of wires that I had. As I work on each little portion of this uh, power drawer, I'm using zip ties to, to make my own wiring harness. It's just trying to keep everything neat. Okay, so let's test it. We power up the unit, the green light comes on switch to on and the red light comes on. This means that the voltages are all set and the units running properly. Now I'm going to start connecting the 12 volt power supplies to the fuse block. I'm using the yellow wire to go to one uh, side of the fuse block. I'm using the yellow and black wire to go to the other side. I'm using solderless connectors here. This way it's uh, just easier to put them together. And then this way if I have to remove any components for uh, to replace anything, I, it'll be easy to take them on and off. At this point I have the meters installed in the panel and also have the uh, on off switches for the to power each 12 volt circuit installed. I'm just securing all the wires for the meters with a piece of solder to keep them out of the way. Before I went any further in the process, I wanted to put the other power supply in the drawer just to help me lay out all the components. Okay, so you notice that there's three terminal strips there. The big one on the left of the drawer is for my 5 volt and the two at the top there are going to be for the 12 volt systems. Okay so while you're watching this let's talk about some of the parts. The meters that I'm using are produced by Adafruit and I picked them up through DigiKey. I'm using the Adafruit uh, amp meter and volt meter. Each 12 volt circuit is being controlled by a 20 amp uh, lighted switch that I also got from DigiKey and here's that part number. Alright here I'm starting to prep the wires for the 5 volt system. This terminal strip is going to be where the uh, fans for the cooling and the uh, thermometer is attached to. The fan is a 5 volt fan that I got from DigiKey. The thermometer is produced by Adafruit and also I got that from DigiKey. All right, now we're just connecting to the thermal strip and we'll be good to go. Here I'm just taking the time to put some uh, wire staples into the board to hold all the wires so that everything's all nice and neat. I find when it comes to electrical and wiring, when you keep it neat, it's, it's just going to pay off benefits in the long run, so when you have to go in and do troubleshooting, you can see everything. I'm 
So at this point, uh, I'm going to start prepping the uh, second power supply to be connected to the on-off switches. In this view here, you can see that all the voltmeters and ampmeters are connected. When connecting the, the meters, uh, there was no instructions that came with it from Adafruit. So I had to go into uh, electrical theory and stuff on the internet to learn how to hook up the ammeter. Adafruit's ammeter has four wires. Two of the wires are to power the unit, and the other two wires are for sensing. The voltmeter was a pretty straightforward installation. One wire went to the positive and one went to the negative. Also in this view, you can see that the 12 volt leads are connected to the terminal strips, but I'll go over how I connected them on the number two power supply. And now the number two power supply is all hooked up and it's running. So now I'm going to use my heat gun and do all the heat shrink. So at the time of editing, I don't have my voltmeters and ammeters installed on the number two side. I'm still waiting for those to come in. Okay, so now I'm taking the yellow and the black and the yellow down to the fuse block for the number two power supply. Now I'm just using a voltmeter to check my voltage to make sure I had a good connection. What's great about this fuse block is it just uses regular automotive fuses. So here I'm inserting the fuses and checking the voltages to make sure everything's hooked up right. Here what I'm doing is I'm taking extra yellow and extra yellow and black wire to make my jumpers to go from the fuse block to the uh, on off switches. I wanted consistency in my coloring of wire to, to help me with troubleshooting. Now I'm just taking a ground wire from the chassis and going to the switch with it. Again using the voltmeter just to check all my connections. Now I'm installing another terminal strip for another 5 volt system. At this time I don't know if I'm going to be using it or not, but this way it's here just in case for the future. Now I'm just using a voltmeter to check the voltages for me, make sure I have good connections again. Now I'm just running a wire from the 12 volt terminal strip down to the switch so I can bring power out. So I'm really trying to keep this drawer as neat as possible. As you can see, it just all the wires add up.
And there you go, the number two side's all hooked up, ready to go. Here I'm just taking time to label everything with a Sharpie marker. Now when I was building the panel with the acrylic, I kept the one protective cover on the one side, so as I was working I would have scratched it up. So here I'm just pulling it off to uh, reveal a nice shiny surface. Don't worry, I'm going to put a piece of trim on the top so it all looks nice and even and neat. Now I'm just using a label maker to go ahead and put labels on everything. So both sides are functional even though that I don't have the meters on the right hand side. But once the meters come in I can just put them right in and it'll be a quick hookup and uh, everything will be good to go. So this was probably one of the more rewarding uh, builds that I've done thus far. I designed this by myself and built it and it all came together and worked really well. One SA and one SB and two SA and two SB. That's a little tribute to my uh, submarine days. Okay, so uh, now that we've uh, gone ahead and put it together, let's uh, show you how it works. So, looking at the panel here, you can see that I've divided the power supplies up. You got the number two, uh, the number two power supply over here, and the number one, and then I divided the circuits, the 12 volt circuits, into uh, SA and SB, and SA and SB. <clears throat> you can see the uh, the green standby lights are on, and that's telling us that we have uh, power to the uh, the power supplies. So the first step in powering it up is going to be to take the uh, number one power supply and power that up. The reason, by the way, I have this set up, I want to power this one up first is because all my fans and my temperature controller are run off of that one. So it kind of the five volt supply off of the number one power supply acts kind of like a house current to uh, run all the uh, appliances. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take the toggle switch to on. You can hear the fan starting up. The red light comes on. And that tells us that uh, voltage is not, uh, the voltages are all set because we've connected that one to the, um, to the gray check voltage wire off of the uh, power supply. Okay, so once we get that one started, we can go ahead and uh, power up our number two power supply. And you can see we've got a red LED over there. And that tells us that uh, voltages are all stabilized. And then we can go ahead and power up each individual um, breaker. So I'll turn on the 1SA. You can see that we get voltage. The voltage is reading at 12.2. Uh, and I'll turn on the one SB. And we get voltage at 12.1 and this voltage drops back down to 12.1. So, and then on the number two, we can power those up. However, I don't have the uh, meters in yet from uh, DigiKey. Um, they should be uh, coming in shortly. And then I'll just put them in afterwards. Okay, so I pan back a little bit now. Now you can see the, uh, the temperature gauge is up and running and that's giving me the temperature inside the cabinet um, that's reading in uh, degrees Celsius um, the Adafruit uh, temperature gauge is in Celsius I didn't realize that until I powered it up I didn't obviously read the label but I couldn't find any kind of anything that's equivalent in Fahrenheit because I kind of want to keep all the gauges uh, all the meters looking the same so for uniformity purposes I'm going to be just keeping that uh, Celsius scale. I'll just uh, make a little chart to put up there to, to do the conversions. Okay everyone, so that's going to put a wrap on episode 12. Um, I put a lot of information out there for you, uh, so I hope you, that, it, that it helps you. Uh, also, putting them part numbers up for you, uh, I just want to let you know that you know I don't endorse one electronics warehouse uh, website over another. Um, I'm just giving you the part numbers of the stuff that I use off of DigiKey. So this way you can go to the website and you could see uh, what kind of parts I was using and whether you can use it for your stuff or find an equivalent in another uh, warehouse. Next, uh, this time when I made the power drawer and the control panel, I used acrylic instead of uh, using masonite. So 
I really like the way it came out. It looks nice and clean and finished. Uh, I like the shine of it. Um, so I will be going back in, in the future when I get some time to, to rebuild the, uh, the DCC drawer and uh, use acrylic to uh, do the control panel for that. This way it'll, it'll look much, much nicer. So one last point here for this episode. This is uh, episode number 12. Uh, we've been doing this for a year now. And as you can see, looking around, I've done a lot of work, uh, I've been working hard and it's coming out along great. I'm very happy. Um, so I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday season and I wish you all a happy and safe new year. So make sure to come back in 2016 and join us for episode 13 when we're going to be starting to build the control panel for the staging yard and I'm going to show you how to install to tortoise switch machines. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.